over the course of the next number of weeks, we are going to do a series of Wyckoff workshops where we will discuss various aspects of the Wyckoff methodology. You've asked for it, let's do it. We're gonna start this week with trend line construction. I consider this to be maybe the most important technique in all of technical analysis. Richard E. Wyckoff had a very unique way of constructing trend lines. I think it's different from any other methodology or approach that you have maybe ever seen. And uh, it is very effective. I hope to demonstrate that for you today. So uh, let's get started. I'm going to reference a series of blog posts that were made years ago, 2015. Wow, long time ago. And uh, we will start with making the trend your friend. These blogs today are discussions of writings about trend line construction. Here you can see Apple computer, the perfect stock to start with. And here is the the classic trend line construction for uh, drawing an uptrend. So the technique is to draw a trend as early as possible in the uptrend, not drawing where you can get the most number of touches, but identifying two adjacent lows that are approximately of equal duration and extent you're never gonna get this perfect. You just wanna get close. And so you can see here these two important lows which are adjacent to each other and uh, the intervening high. These are the three points a trend line is drawn on. This is called the stride of a trend. The idea is that Wyckoff would teach us that the stride of a trend is established right off the bat, very early in the advance, very early in the decline. And so here we draw a trend line underneath these two important lows. This gives us the stride of the advance. This is called a support line or a demand line. The intervening high, we draw a parallel line. The parallel goes over the market and touches the intervening high and is extended upward in a parallel fashion. This gives us a trend channel. And the trend channel will generally contain the bulk of the advance over the course of the next number of uh, weeks, months, years, depending on the time frame that you're operating in because these trend line techniques work in all time frames. So here you can see a beautiful example. Here is the uh, uh, overbought condition where it runs up, throws over the top of the channel, and the channel acts as resistance and turns it back in. Throws over the top here, comes back in, and then you have a series of touches, but it no longer has the veracity. It doesn't have the dynamic advancing capacity that it did before. This is a loss of momentum. This is a range bound condition. You can see here, we're drawing resistance and support. These are trend lines of sorts, which just go sideways. And we'll talk about that in future weeks. But here we're turning off, attempting to test the overbought line and it turns down and fails. Okay, let's keep going. Got a lot to cover here. We're not gonna get it all done. Here is the uh, biotech shares, IBB, ETF. Here is a technique called the reverse use of trend lines. And the reverse use of trend lines is to draw the overbought line or often referred to as the supply line first two intervening, two um, adjacent highs uh, after an advance, you can see approximately equal duration in the advances here in a reaction with a, a low between them. Trend line is drawn off these two points. These points are establishing the stride of the advance. So the advance takes off and goes up. Well, gosh, look what happens way up here in the future. This is, these were drawn in November, December, and in March, 
you get a big climactic throw over overbought condition, stops the advance. Well, look at our uh, channel. Our channel's drawn off this intervening low. Big change of character as it immediately reacts back into the channel and goes down to the bottom. We draw resistance at the buying climax, support at the automatic reaction low. We do this drill all the time. We're gonna talk more about it in future weeks, but now we have a range bound condition. But notice how this beautiful uptrending channel contained the advance, showed the overbought condition, and then also signals the change of character into a sideways uh, condition. Okay, and we will move on. Here is the last chart in the uptrend uh, traditional technique, two adjacent lows, intervening high, draw the channel, look at the throw over and overbought condition, produces a buying climax. Notice how drawing the trend lines, this is what I'm talking about with the x-ray vision, because now that we draw the trend lines, it frames the advance, it defines it, and shows us when it's getting overbought, it's throwing over, it's becoming exhausted in its uptrend. We want to participate in the uptrend and we want to see the exhaustion at the end. We'll look at how it reacts, rallies back up to the top of the channel. And this is also a resistance line on two levels because it's the resistance, the pink line and the channel line fails there. There's a tremendous amount of selling comes in, huge tail on that bar as a weekly chart and then a failure down and out attempt to rally up under the underside of the channel and then a complete failure. How great is that? These tools are incredible. Okay, uh, I'm gonna pause here for a sec and we will be right back. Okay, here is a, here is another uh, example. Oh, this is being a chart whisperer, July of 2015. Go into the archives for Wyckoff power charting and just go by the, the month, go right in there. You'll be right at this blog post. You can uh, go in and study these. I'm not gonna go through them. I don't have the time, but I want you to read the blog and see the construction, the techniques, look at all the touches in the uh, ongoing uptrend. I really like this one on Corning, two adjacent lows intervening high. Look at all the touches here as it becomes overbought. Also look at the touch here as it throws under the support line. Beautiful situation for swing traders to be able to trade that advance. So it rallies up, cannot get back up to the overbought high, uh, top of the channel and then fails down. And look at how after it comes back below the resistance line here, it has no lift in it and it just melts away. And so uh, here is the transports. Have a really close look at this one. This is a phenomenal example. Look at all the touches on this channel, all drawn on these three points right here at the beginning of this. And also notice the uh, advance and how it just lifts off uh, very sharply and then settles into its stride uh, later in, in the middle of 2013. And here is the uh, financials. So this is uh, just an example of how you identify the key adjacent lows. Look at all the touches, phenomenal. And in trend line construction, especially in channels, we want to see the throw overs and the throw unders because these represent extremes of overbought and oversold conditions that we can trade on because our expectation is that the stride of the advance is going to hold as it's going through time. So uh, keep that in mind. All right, so I'll be right back. Trend of Palooza is another blog on trend line construction, the difference being that we talk about how to draw down trends. And here it's the same technique, but it's in reverse. We tend to draw the two adjacent points over the market, produces a downtrend line. In this case, this line right here, this is called the supply line. That's because when the market rallies up to that line, it uh, supply is present. And at that level, 
supply comes in, turns the stock or the index back down into its downtrend. Look at this incredible throw under here of uh, Harley Davidson. This is a huge decline. This is a climax and look at how well the downtrend channel identifies the climax. It comes back in, rallies back up to an overbought condition at the supply line turns down, but it holds a support. So beautiful example, again, x-ray vision, how these channels really help us to see what's going on and frame the trading. Here's a beautiful downtrending chart. You go in and study these on your own time. This is your homework. Look at this beautiful throw under here. This is an oversold condition. It's a climax. Throw overs, throw unders, oversold conditions are often exhaustion of the declining trend. And look what happens over the course of the next few months. It builds a cause for an important rally. So attempts to get accelerate down out of the channel, can't do it, comes back up in, these are all trading opportunities, goes to the top of the channel, tests it, and there we go. And then here, we'll let you uh, look at Cree uh, um, as you have time, but here's the oversold condition and the throw under of this channel. Okay, uh, be right back. By the way, next week, our Wyckoff workshop is going to return back to the prior subject of tape reading. Roman Bogomazov is going to be our guest. We're going to do a two-part tape reading special. Huge amount of positive comments and interest in tape reading from the last one we did a few weeks ago. So we're going to do a workshop. So let's uh, keep at this. Now here, this is an intraday chart showing, you've seen this chart most likely if you've been following uh, power charting, is that this is a weekly chart or a 60 minute chart of the NASDAQ 100, classic trend line construction, uh, a May low and a June low, approximate duration here, here's the intervening high, trend channel, and look at how well this works. So we can see a uh, beautiful advance throws over here and then consolidate. So this is a climax of sorts with a gap, throws over, throwing over the channel is a classic sign of an overbought condition, at least temporarily. Well, look at this range bound condition that we had here from here all the way over to here. So the channel did a wonderful job of alerting us to this overbought condition. And I talked about this at the time because this happened in the middle, middle of June. And we discussed this both in the Wyckoff market discussions and on power charting. So a beautiful example here, range bound condition. And basically this set up a beautiful touch of the, the demand line here and set up the conditions for a very important rally into a climax, overbought, throw over, buying climax. And at the time we said this was an important climactic condition and it turned down and had a classic change of character, went all the way to the bottom of the channel. Well, look what happened this time. At the demand line, it basically just uh, consolidated and hung out on the trend line, uh, as was the case, I think it was with Corning and uh, that we just looked at, but here all of a sudden it turned down and now became clearly oversold under the channel, attempted to rally. This time it goes to the demand line from underneath, which is now a form of important resistance and turned off of that clearly a range bound condition. We're down to the support area. Uh, wouldn't surprise me, especially with this acceleration that we've had that we have, if you draw, we're probably intraday, you could draw this little trend channel here, downtrend channel, that this is some kind of an oversold condition will attempt to rally. And uh, uh, may not be the end of it, but it will attempt to rally off of uh, an important support level. Okay, so here, same, same chart, same situation. I just wanna point out that you can zoom in. The beauty of 
stockcharts.com is that you can annotate these charts, keep the annotations, come back to them over and over, which is exactly what I do is I recheck them, you know, daily, weekly, and uh, look at their progression because of this beautiful trend line construction uh, technique. Well, it keeps all your trend lines, even though we can't see it there. The trend line goes off the left side of the chart, but all the construction is still there. Uh, here, I want to just talk briefly because I do want to stay relevant to the market. We talked about how equity put call ratios were extremely low. And there was a lot of discussion about trying to keep uh, trend lines or uh, keep uh, uh, the sentiment uh, more neutral and that it wasn't as extreme as this ratio looked. But in fact, this very extreme ratio, this is the 10 day moving average in the 35 day, really shows that uh, historically going back to 2017, that we have a tremendous amount of bullishness, frothiness in the market. This attempt to rally back down towards these key prior lows shows that they're on a very little rally in the market right here, shows that there's a lot of bullish behavior out there. Well, look what happened. And we pointed it out at the time and warned about this, that these extreme readings would influence the market. Well, look what happens. We're in a very big trading range now, and uh, it's gone on for quite some time. And the bullishness has not worked its way off yet. Okay, enough said about that. Uh, here, this is just a classic reverse use of trend lines on the NASDAQ comp and uh, you, uh, drawing a parallel underneath here in the uptrend reverse use touch here, here, here. Here's your climactic surge goes right up to the top and then fails. But look at all these touches along here, along the bottom, goes through the oversold condition and then turns back up all represent good trading opportunities. And then here you can just see the deterioration of the uh, bullish percent index as it's running up into this final climax. Look at how this area is just sagging. Okay, uh, this is uh, the NASDAQ 100 going back to 95 to 2000. Here, uh, classic traditional use of trend lines. Here's the stride of the advance being set here and here, overbought here, and a trend channel, parallel trend lines. Look at all the touches in here. Look at how this sets up uh, important lows and has very strong rallies back up into the channel. Attempts to get out of the channel, turns right back up into it. These are beautiful trading opportunities. And then finally, you can see in 2000, this big climactic surge that's a huge overbought condition, throw over of the channel. And then in a very brief, stiff decline, turns right back into the channel again. Oh my gosh, what a useful tool this is. And then uh, attempts to test from underneath and momentum is waning as that is happening in the trend channel defines it well, and then an absolute failure down and out of the channel. This was a very bad bear market for the NASDAQ stocks. And then this was the IPO advance we've talked about in previous weeks. And you can see here how the IPO advance coincides with the NASDAQ relative strength just going into just a heated advance, climactic inverted V top. And so that's fantastic. Well, so here, just to compare, this is the NASDAQ comp this is a comp to the S&P, slightly different index construction, but look at all the touches all the way through here. Here's where we drew the trend lines from. Here's the parallel. And look at all the touches throughout on both sides here. And right at the end, we get a classic overbought condition, which coincides with a big surge of relative strength in 2020. And we, uh, this may continue, uh, have every reason to think that the relative strength could just keep going on for a while. As we saw in 2000, it got quite a bit higher than the channel. That could very well happen here. And so uh, we're not going to get too far ahead of this. We're going to let it just trade. But notice the uh, incredible um, uh, 
acceleration of the relative strength all the way through this last part of 2020 and all of the incredible trading touches that have occurred in here that were very uh, tradable on the uptrend. Okay, so here uh, we've seen this chart many times. This is reverse use of trend lines. I've been using this chart really since uh, just uh, after the March lows, we've had point and figure counts that have uh, been really worked well. But here, overbought, overbought. This was a climax in July. Then the big buying climax set up a range bound condition. Look at that beautiful trend channel. Uh, I use the convention of a dotted line for the parallel overbought or oversold line for uh, so that I can look right at the chart and see which line is the primary trend line and which one is the parallel. And uh, so that is something you should look for on my charts as we go forward. Uh, here is another one. I'm just going to let you screen capture this. Here is reverse use of trend lines going back to 2004, 2007. And look at how these touches uh, occurred with important pullbacks. And then we have two trend lines here. This is a reverse use of trend lines. Look at how well this worked. And here is a normal use of trend lines. Did I draw them in different colors? They're both solid. So they aren't parallel, but they're nearly parallel. Look at how well they worked. And there's an important thing here, and that is that experiment as much as you can with as many different approaches as you can. And uh, don't be afraid to draw trend lines on these charts. And the beauty of it is with stockcharts.com, you can draw them all and save them all and uh, refer to them all, uh, all you want. This is a relative strength line of the NDX to the S&P 100. Notice how we did a reverse use of trend lines here. And uh, we can draw trend lines on relative strength, do it all the time. So uh, here, now this is another interesting experimentation with uh, trend lines. This is the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average back to 2016. Well, look what happens is we get into this period right here <clears throat> and we have a buying climax. Look at this incredible buying climax. And then an important decline. This occurred very quickly, stopped in a hurry, and then went sideways, built a cause and had a rally up to a secondary test minor throw over of the buying climax. So we can draw these two adjacent peaks. We can draw a preliminary trend line there, which we uh, have done. And here, after this very sharp decline that took out the automatic reaction low right here, we drew another trend line in the opposite direction. They are uh, moving away from each other and uh, so what happened? So this is what ultimately happened. Oh my gosh, both these trend lines became incredibly relevant in the future. So here is on the Dow, look at beautiful touch here. Uh, there's a trend line here we could draw and, and uh, but the subject for later. And so you can see here an up thrusting action that throws over the top of this line stalls in uh, early 2020, January, February. We d dug into this and zoomed in and looked at this at the time, a lot of divergent characteristics here. And then we had the COVID decline into March. Wow, what a incredible decline and look where it stopped. It stopped right on our downtrending trend line here, throw under oversold. Well, notice what's happened with the Dow. The Dow has not been as strong as the NASDAQ 100. You can see an attempt to rally above this trend line here in the uh, this COVID uh, rally off of the March lows. And then it pulled back and now it's attempted to rally again to another lower high here. And look at this big bar. This is very disconcerting here because we have a range bound state. We have a big supply bar that's occurred here. Now we're going to see how well it rallies here on this prior low support and whether or not this trend line becomes resistance again or whether it's building a cause 
for another advance. And here we are coming right into the election. So very interesting place on this Dow Jones chart. And these were with trend lines that we drew in 2018. Phenomenal. Okay, so here's another one. This is, uh, you can see, because we draw these trend lines as soon as the trend begins, normal use of trend lines, traditional use of trend lines, demand line here, drawn off two key declines. We have a stride of the advance intervening high, so we have a parallel. And this is the S&P 500 large cap index and here's our trend line and look at how this informs the trading going forward this is 2016 when these were drawn this was a backup of a prior accumulation range and this is the election of november 2016 sets up a big rally and this rally just marches for more than a year right up into the buying climax we just looked at on the dow chart that we just had, and then we drew the um, broadening trend lines on the S&P, and also we draw resistance and support. We'll talk about that in a future episode, but look at this trend line that we drew back in 2016. It broke down into the in the fourth quarter of 2018 into that shakeout low set up the low and then it rallies underneath this very important demand line until it throws over the top of it here. And here's our 2020 decline. And this is an overbought condition and a throw over and then a failure right back down to and through all of these key support areas. It doesn't get down to the lower trend line as the Dow did, but it became very oversold below this uh, prior low. And then we have our very important rally that occurred off of the March low and look where it went. It didn't, it went right up to our trend lines. It threw over, became overbought. Now we have a test of this area, a failure back below it, attempt to rally. Notice how on this next rally so far, and this is weekly, it has not been able to close on the second test here above the trend line. And then the response is this very important supply bar that we've had. And we, again, right into the 2020 election, we're gonna be watching this very closely. And with that, I'm gonna sign off. Thanks for being here. See you next time. Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment, and if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.